God wants to give you new understanding, new insights. We're going through the book of Daniel, chapter 7. There God encoded everything that's happening in our day. The players of today, the timelines, the, the deadline, everything is given in Daniel. We are decoding these things and revealing these things, these mysteries. God wants them revealed to this terminal generation in this final decade on the planet. The king is coming back soon. That is why he has sent me to you to tell you everything that God has written concerning the times we're living in, the end of time, this final generation. What is God saying? Daniel was told to seal the message until the days we're living in, when he will open the message for all of us to understand. And he has anointed me and appointed me to open these things and to give them to the body of Christ, to equip them and to tell them what time it is, the timeline, decoding everything that God has already given us as his children, the apple of his eye. We are too blessed to be stressed because we are chosen for this hour. We are appointed for this hour. These are things that were given to Daniel 2,500 years ago for us, that we may know the truth. That's why God has anointed me and said, go prepare my bride, for I am coming back soon. And I'm praying that God will give you understanding and that he will put within you a passion for the Lord and a compassion for the lost. Because it's not about understanding these things only. It's the application of what God wants. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me in this terminal generation, in this final decade, the decade of the return of the King of Kings. The most critical time in history. We saw in Daniel chapter 7, the rising up, first of of the lion, which is Great Britain. Then we saw the, rise, the, the, the eagle that was attached to the lion. The United States of America, in 1776, it separated. We saw the, the coming forth of the bear, the Soviet Union. Now, we're dealing with the next beast that mentioned in Daniel chapter 7. Please read Daniel chapter 7 so you can have a full understanding of what the things I'm going to share because I shared when Great Britain rose to power, 1707, uh, when Great America separated from Great Britain, 1776, when the bear was born, 1922, the USSR, was born and how they devoured 100 million people. Go back to the sermons, the messages that I've already covered because we're moving forward because it's line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little as we unfold and, and, and reveal these things that God wants us to know that he is in absolute control of the future. The future is not going to be defined by the United States of America. It's not going to be defined by the Security Council. It's not going to be defined by the Soviet Union. It's not going to be defined by China. The future has already been defined in it is written. God said it. That settles it. Will anything happen that God has not already told us? No. Nothing is going to happen that God has not already given us, told us in his word as his beloved children. We are, too, we are too blessed to be stressed with all the anxieties and fears. and You know, the world is in turmoil. We are at peace because we know that our God is the blessed controller of everything in the world. And that we are the apple of his eye, the elect of the Father, chosen for such a time as this. Set apart for such a time as this. 
that God wants us to know these things so that we can stand up and tell others, don't panic, don't fear. There is nothing to fear. Don't pursue conspiratorial interpretation of what's going on because what's going on is it is written. God said it. And it's not going to, nothing's going to happen. That's not in scripture. Nobody's going to redefine the world. The devil can't do it. The world leaders can't do it. God has already revealed everything that's going to happen. He showed the rising up of Great Britain. He showed the rising up of America. He showed the rising up of the, of the Soviet Union. It's all in scripture. The timeline is given. And now the next beast that Daniel saw, Daniel 7, Verse 6, this is the next beast that he saw. After this, I looked, and there was another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Who is the, the leopard? When did the leopard rise? According to the divine timeline and according to history. Because history documents the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Prophecy is history written in advance. Headlines of tomorrow written in advance. So here we, we see after the Soviet Union, there was going to come another beast like a leopard. Look at the sequence of events. The first beast 1707, Great Britain. The second, the, 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 the eagle, 1776. The third one, uh, 1922, the, the bear, the Soviet Union. Now we come to 1947. There is a sequence of events. There is a chronological presentation of every event, every kingdom. All the sequence of events are given. The timeline is given. That's how precise our God is. There is no confusion because God's not the author of confusion. There is clarity with no ambiguity. That is why it is important to understand that everything is happening according to it is written. Infallible, inerrant. Every prophecy is infallible and inerrant because God it's preordained everything. He's sovereign in the affairs of men. History is his story. The story of the lordship of Jesus over history. Here he tells us that the next beast is going to have four heads. And it's a leopard. The leopard represents Western Europe. It represents the European Japhetic people groups. What is the leopard? It represents... Western Europe, it represents in large the former, the, the, the former Greco-Roman world because it's still the Roman rule according to the scripture. It's just going through different phases, different changes, but it's the same thing. Eastern Rome, Western Rome. Those are the last players until Jesus comes back. They were, Rome was here when Jesus came the first time. Rome will be here when Jesus comes back the second time. So now we are looking at the leopard, which is the, which has four heads. When was that born? What is Daniel being shown here? What is he describing here? Do, can we tell who it is, when it happened, and how it happened? Yes. The leopard was born after the Second World War. In 1947, when was the bear, when, when was the leopard born? 1947. Four heads. Who were the four heads? They are the four nations called the Allied Powers. Those were the four nations that united together and fought together, that is Great Britain, United States of America, France, and Russia. Those were the four that were at the Paris P-38 
peace treaty, the Allied powers, the victors of the Second World War, to them was given the power to dominate the world. Those four were given the power to dominate the world. Russia to dominate the kings of the East. America and Great Britain and France to dominate the Western world. The, the leopard was given power. The, the four heads who were at Paris, peace treaty, who signed that peace treaty, the four of them are the ones that Danny is talking about here that they were given the power they were going to dominate since 1947. From 1947 to 1949, NATO was born to strengthen the leopard. Because all these things are encoded in scripture for us to decode by revelation. Now, NATO is born 1949. And in 1957, by the Treaty of Rome, the European Union was born. Now we see the leopard emerging to rule, to have dominion given by God 2,500 years ago. God says that's what's going to happen, and that's what happened isn't it amazing? He tells us the end from the beginning. He said, the European powers, Western Europe, including, look at it, Russia was part of the Paris Peace Treaty because Russia would dominate, as part of the leopard, would dominate the kings of the East and would become a bear in itself, its own identity. But here it's included to show that the inclusion of European Japhetic control of the world is established by divine purposes, by divine will, and that that's the way the world is because God said it, God established it, that's why it cannot be changed. This is how precise the scripture is. It shows us clearly the rising up of NATO and the controlling of NATO. The Allied powers that fought during the Second War against Hitler and his allies, the Axis powers, those were, that was Hitler's coalition. And these fought against, the Leopard fought against that coalition. And that coalition was doomed to fail because that coalition wanted to sabotage the plan of God. Because he, in 1917, the Balfour Declaration said there should be a homeland established for the Jewish people back in the ancient land. And in 1917, Palestine was liberated. And the plan was in place to fulfill biblical prophecy to return the Jewish people to the ancient land. That was the plan of the allies, the allied powers, and the Axis powers. Hitler's coalition had a different idea. The idea was to come against what God said, to stop God's plan. The reason why the allied powers won is because they were on the side of God. When you are on God's side, you're on the winning side. Because they were fighting to see the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And through you all, the families of the earth will be blessed. The allied powers. United States of America, Great Britain, France, Russia, we all got together to fight against the, 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 the Axis powers who were opposing everything that God wanted to do. That's why they began to, 
to kill the Jews. Because why? Because the devil wanted to stop the Jews from going back to the land of Israel. And the Axis powers, that is Hitler's coalition, was opposed to the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. They were the, used by the devil as an, agent, as an agent of the devil. They were to stop and hinder the plan of God by exterminating all the Jewish, Jewish people so that they would not be able to return to the land, so that the scripture would not be fulfilled. And that's why they were fighting on the wrong side because they were fighting against what God said because God says, I will restore them back into the land. And Hitler and his coalition, the, the Axis powers, were against that. They didn't understand that when God says he's going to bring his people back, he's going to bring his people back. It says right here in Ezekiel 36 verse 24, For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you unto your own land. That's what God says. I will bring you back to your own land. God said it. The allied powers agreed with God, stood on the side of God. And the Axis powers with Hitler, who were the Axis powers? Who were the people, the nations that, that were with Hitler? Germany, Italy, Romania, Bulgaria, Finland, and Japan. Those seven nations were in Hitler's coalition to stop the scriptures from being fulfilled, the plan of God from being fulfilled. They were doomed to failure. They were fighting on the wrong side. That's why power was given to the leopard, to those who stand for righteousness. For those who stand for the plan and purpose of God. It's a great lesson for nations to learn. Because those who fight God are never going to win. As a matter of fact, we know about Hitler. We know that Hitler was so determined to not allow the Jewish people and God had a plan, and he revealed that plan in his word. Clearly, he says, Hitler would fall and not be found. When you go to, to the book of Daniel, it tells about Hitler. Because Hitler was a biblical character, a prophetic character. The Bible already revealed the end of Russia, oh, no, sorry, the end of Germany and the end of Hitler. That's how precise the scripture is. God told Daniel that Hitler would die, would fall and not be found because he wanted us to know that this Second World War was not by chance. It was ordained. It was revealed in Scripture. It was part of the divine timeline, the prophetic timeline. That's why he tells us how, how Hitler would die. You say, where is that? Let me read it for you. Daniel chapter 11, verse 19. And after this, he, Hitler, will turn back towards the fortress of his own land. If you follow history, that's exactly what happened. But he will stumble and fall, not to be found, or not to be seen anymore. What happened to Hitler? He stumbled and fell, and not to be found. His body has not been found to this day. Because God says this will be a sign of the end of the of the ally of the Axis powers and that the Allied powers will win and triumph over him and then you you try to flee back to his fortress 
from trying to go towards Britain, you will go back and he will fall and not be found because power has been given to the leopard and that he was not going to be part of that. And we see that being literally fulfilled, he fell and not be found because his agenda to exterminate the Jewish people so that there would be no return of the Jewish people to the ancient land so that God would be proven wrong. He was proven wrong. That's how accurate biblical prophecy is. It guides us into the future. It tells us the end of nations and powers and rulers of the world because our God reigns supreme above all the kings of the earth. He is the Lord. And he has a plan, and he has revealed that plan in Scripture. He gives us all the players, their time, their season, 1947. The leopard was given power to rule, and it, it's, ru it's ruling even to this day. So when will the leopard's power come to an end? It's given in Scripture. Next week when I deal with the end of the the leopard, the time of the leopard, which began in 1947. It morphed into NATO, then into the treaty with Rome, the treaty of Rome, the EU, that all power base. Where is it going 2022? What will become of the leopard? Where will it be? What would be the end of it? It's given in Scripture. Everything that's going to happen until the day Jesus comes back is given in Scripture. We know the end of all the wars. For instance, we talk, I talked about the coming nuclear war that will kill 2 billion people. Not 2 billion and 10. Not 2 billion and 50. 2 billion people. Exactly, precisely. It's given. There is nothing that's going to happen beyond what Scripture has said. I want all of God's children to understand how profound are the scriptures, how amazing are the scriptures, how glorious is our God, that the God that controls the future knows you by name, cares for you, called you, chose you, redeemed you by his own blood, reconciled you to himself, and said, you are mine for all eternity. I'll give you the deadline, I'll give you the sequence of events. I'll give you everything that you need to know until I come to take you home. You will not be ignorant of these things. That's why they're encoded in Scripture. The destinies of nations and powers are all in Scripture. I, I understand that many people are asking, when are you going to talk about Great Britain and the Queen has just passed away? Are you going to talk about that? What is the role of England? We will come to that because they have a role, an end-time role, that in its in Scripture. We will talk about the transition and where we are going, where are we, how, much, how many years are left, and what's going to happen in those years. It's all given to us in Scripture. I pray that you would listen to this message and that you pass this message to others because everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to know because the time is short. We're living on borrowed time. Time is of essence. The king is coming. And he has told us everything that's going to happen. And everything is happening according to it is written. Because we know it is written. God has opened up the scriptures and given us revelation and understanding so that we can impart that to the people of God. So that the people of God can rise up as a mighty army armed with this, with it is written, armed with revelation, that they may say, we know where we are, and we know also who we are. We are the apple of God's eye. We know where we are going, because we're going home to be with the Lord. That's what this is all about. It's all about God in history. History is not random. Things don't happen by chance. Everything is preordained, and there is a God that orchestrates everything according to his counsel. And he has revealed his counsel to us. The Axis powers. When I say the Axis powers, I'm talking about the German coalition of nations in the Second World War. Why did they come together? What was the motivation? 
Does the Bible talk about their plans? Yes, it does. This was their plan revealed to David in Psalm 83. It talks about them. It says this. For behold, your enemies, the enemies of the plan of God, are in a tumult. Tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. The excess powers. Hitler's coalition. They have taken crafty counsel against your people, Israel, the Jewish people. And consulted together against your sheltered ones, the elected ones, the, the people of God. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a, a nation. Let's make sure that this people will never again be a nation on the earth. That's their plan. The Holocaust. To come again is what God said. I'll bring you back to your land. And they conspired against them. That the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with, with one consent. They formed a confederacy. They formed a confederacy. The Axis powers. Hitler's coalition. They formed a coalition, a confederacy against you. So they come together, strengthen one another in their vain imagination to stop and to hinder the plan of God. The will of God will be done. I'm talking about the sovereignty of God in the affairs of men. I'm talking about you being chosen by God and how God will watch over you because in the, in the overall things, in the, in the plan of God, he had you in mind. He knows you by name and he has a plan for you. In the midst of all this big plan, it's not the new world's plan. God's got a plan and that plan is going to be implemented. The new world order is going to be according to biblical prophecy. So there is nothing new that's going to happen that we don't already know. We can define the future because we know the future because our God controls the future. That's why we are too blessed to be stressed with what's going on. I am giving you encouragement, strength to stand up, speak out, and shout hallelujah. Because it's a time to rejoice because everything is happening according to the will of God. We see the end of, the, of this confederacy. They, they plan evil, but God's got a plan. Psalm 83, verse 13 to, to, to 15. Oh, my God. Make them like the, the wilding dust. Make them like the dust. Like the chaff before the wind. Like the chaff before the wind. As the fire burns the wood, that is Hiroshima. As a fire burns the, the wood, as the, the flame sets the mountains on fire. That's what we're talking about. Planned by God to end the Second World War. So pursue them with your tempest and frighten them. Frighten them with your storm. The nuclear explosion that stopped the excess powers. Right here, predicted, foretold, pre-written for us to know that it was part of what God said. Because their plan was against the plan of God. The only plan that will prevail even in your personal life is the plan of God. You must seek the plan of God. You must wait upon God. You must not do what you think. If you want to be frustrated and disappointed, be in pursuit of your own agenda. Because your own agenda will not work. Because the scripture tells us, God tells us the future. He controls the future. In Isaiah 46, verse 9 to 10, remember the former things of old, 
For I am God. And there is none other. There's nobody else out there. I am God. And there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning. We are messengers of God. To declare to you what God has already written concerning the future of America, of Europe, of Africa, of Asia. Everything has been already written and we're here to proclaim to you that our God is in control. Because he says it right here, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things which are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I'll do all of my pleasure. The counsel of God will stand. Telling us in Daniel, 2,500 years ago, he tells us about the rising up of Neto, the domination of Neto, of the world, the Japhetic control of the world, their global influence. All this defined by God is not a human achievement. It is the unfolding of the plan and the purposes of God. That is why when, when we look at all these things, we can only say to God, be the glory. Great things he has done. Great things he is doing. Because we see in the hand of God. We see the power of God. We see the faithfulness of God, because He is God, and He will not change and adjust His plan to the new world order. He will not adjust the plan for the church to the will of the world, the new world order. He said the gates of hell will not prevail. The gates of hell will not prevail. The devil will not prevail over the church of Jesus Christ. The church shall rise and stand. Because God said it, that settles it. There will be a triumphant, victorious church on the earth. Yes, the church is going to be here. Here to demonstrate the power of God. Yes, we are here, not scared of the Antichrist, the false prophet. Because God's got a plan for us in these days. The future belongs to us. Because God said it. In the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19 to 20. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken? Will he not make good? Behold, I have, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed. I cannot reverse it. It's clear here. Has God said, will you not do it? He said it. All these things and plans are declared by God in his word. And these plans are coming to pass. They have come to pass. We look at history. We see biblical prophecy being fulfilled. We look at current events. We see biblical prophecy being, being fulfilled. Everything is telling us that our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he alone is in control of everything. He is the blessed controller of everything. That means you and me, we are to rejoice. Because what he said, shall he not do? Everything he said concerning geopolitical situation in every generation happened just the way he said it. Because it's in control of geopolitics. He is in control of everything that's going on in our world today. And he said, what I said shall I not do. We see his faithfulness on the global scale. But I got news for you. What he said to you, it's going to happen. Because he says right here, as he said, will he not do it? He has said to you, now I'm moving from the global Pro prophetic fulfillment to a personal application of what God is saying to you. Because you are the center of God's will. You are the object of eternal love. 
You are the reason why God gave us biblical prophecy. Because he wants you as his child to know. Because it's all about you, the apple of his eye. It's about your future. It's about your role in these last days. What God wants you to do. As he said, shall he not do. He said you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do all things. Because you can do what God says you can do. Because God will not fail. He said, I will give you power over all the powers of the enemy. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That means no weapon formed against you with the world, new world order, with anybody out there who prosper. Because God said it. Shall he not do what he said? He said, call upon me and I will answer you. Just call upon him and he will answer you. As we see his faithfulness in geopolitics. We see his faithfulness to you, his child. The elect of God. Chosen before the foundation of the world. Set apart to be the apple of his eye. You, make a more you're more important. That's why he tells you everything that the world's going to do. So that you know that... God, your God, is in control of everything going on around you. That you have been chosen to be a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Because Jesus came to die for you. And when Jesus died, the Bible says you were called crucified with Christ. You were called buried with Christ. You were called raised with Christ. You are called seated with Christ. You are called ruling with Christ. You are called eternal with Christ. You experience co sonship with Christ. Everything the Father has given to Christ, you are a joint heir with Christ Jesus. God said it, and he is faithful. He has demonstrated his faithfulness through the ages. Nothing that God said has, has failed. That means he's not going to fail you. He's going to do great and mighty things for you. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 and 33, God says, those that know their God in these last days, in these days of visitation, in the final countdown to the return of our Lord and Savior, he says, the generation that will live in this hour, those that know their God are going to do exploits. The time for you to rise and shine is come. The hour for the manifestation of the sons of God has now come. And he's calling you. Because time is of essence. Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. If you can send me, send me. Child of the Most High God, the time has now come for you to say, here I am. As I see your faithfulness in history. As I see your faithfulness today in raising up the leopard kingdom to dominate the world. I've seen that. I hear that. It's everywhere. Everything the Bible says has happened. As I see your power and your greatness. And that you have chosen me to be seated together with your son Jesus. To rule and reign together with him. To give me dominion and authority in the affairs of men. I say, thy will be done and not my will. This should be the prayer of every child of God. Because what he said, shall he not do? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, if you're sick, by my stripes you're healed. If you have lack in your life, he says, I'll meet all your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because you are important. Because you are the object of his love in the midst of all the chaos and the confusion and the crisis we're living through, we're going through. God is saying to you, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never, never abandon you. I'll always be with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? That means the future is wonderful for the child of God. You're a child of God. You're born again. You are set apart for his glory. Because you are chosen, it's time for you to say, here I am. What's your plan for my life? What do you want me to do? 
Because you are safe and secure in the sin of God's will. Your provision is at the center of God's will. Your protection is at the center of God's will. That's why you must seek the will of God. That will be done in my life as it is in heaven. That should be the prayer of every child of God. I want you at this moment to pause. We thank God for his faithfulness through the ages. We see his hand. We see his signature in history. But here, I need to see your hand and your power in my life. Because your life matters more than the whole universe. That's why Jesus died for you. Because you are more important to him. You are the apple of his eye. God loves you too much to leave you where you are. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. It's time you say, God, here I am. You say, okay, men of God, I hear you. I'm excited to see the, the faithfulness of God. I'm excited to see God unveiling, decoding, deciphering all these things and exposing all these things to, to the people of God, to strengthen them, to build them up, to cause them to know that God is in control. Because the devil tried to frighten them and say, I'm in control. He's not in control. God is in control. History is the story of Jesus. He is the Lord of history. Everything is going to happen according to the dictates of the scriptures. According to the scripture, the, end, the world will come to an end. At the appointed time, God is the author and the finisher. And he chose you. And he said to me, men of God, help me. I need the peace of God. I need the joy of the Lord. I feel so dry. I feel so lonely. I feel so isolated. I feel I'm all alone. I need the peace of God. And it is presence with me. I'm compromised. I don't pray enough. I don't read his word enough. I feel so dry. Can you help me? Yes. The Lord is your helper. In time of need, you are in need, and he is willing to touch you right now. Are you willing to let him touch you? Are you willing to let him change you? Are you willing for him to fill you afresh with his joy and his peace? Are you willing to forgive, to let go of bitterness or anger or unforgiveness? Are you willing to let go? If you're willing, I want you to confess to God that you're so sorry. You're so dried up with just uh, not reading the word, not praying, just toasted and tormented with all circumstances and the, the, the bombardment of the evil one. But right now you're pausing to say, God, I need you. I confess my sins to you. I want you to cleanse me. I want you to fill me. I want you to pray right now. And I'll pray for you that the joy of the Lord will be restored to you. And then the peace that passes all understanding will fill your heart. Are you ready? This is a defining moment. This is the moment you've been waiting for. A fresh touch from Jesus. Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are saying, Lord, here I am, my Father. Restore me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. Wash me clean. Fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. 
from this moment, Father, I yield my life completely and totally to your Holy Spirit to lead me and to guide me. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you who say, you know, man of God, I really don't know Jesus. I have never received him as my personal savior. I need you to show me how I can receive Jesus to come into my life. I need you to help me to know Jesus, to make him Lord of my life. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be caught up in the cares of this world. I'm a ch I want to be a child of God. Help me. Okay. I'll pray with you. And I want you to pray after me to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. To come into your heart, to live in you, to guide you, and to, to lead you to eternity with God in heaven above. You say, yes, that's exactly what I want. Okay, pray after me. Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus. For the blood that he shed on Calvary for me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. To be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to write my name in the book of life. So that when I die, I'll spend an eternity with you. I give you my future, and I give you everything from this day forth. Lead me and guide me now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You've been born into the family of God. If you didn't follow me, you can just simply say, Jesus, come into my heart, and you come in. Be my Lord and Savior. And it's done. It's that simple. He hears you. He sees your heart. That's all it, that matters. It's your heart coming to God and saying, God, here, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Read the Bible. Find a church. Now, for all of God's children, I want to put a blessing upon you. Because God wants you blessed. Not cursed, but blessed. So I want to put a blessing upon you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and shine upon you and be gracious towards you and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.